Fuck it, we'll do it live. Fuck it, we'll do it live. <laughs> we'll do right. it live. We're doing it live. All right, bring it back again. Today on Summoning Down History Road, we're going to be talking about Impressionalism art and the artist, uh, and a couple notable artists. I am Jackson. And I'm Ray. I'm D as always. All right, so uh, who can talk to me about what Impressionalism actually is? Well, to me, Impressionalism is something that an artist gets an idea is inspired by even gets obsessed by a time and event where people are gathering or just typically impressionism from what i see is like back in the 1800s and traveling through the countryside see a lot of rustic farmhouses and wheat fields and just many many vibrant areas where artists tend to break things down some simply and using various colors techniques to so it's like a real picture but just kind of exacerbated exaggerated a little bit to punched up a little bit to give it more of a pizzazz yeah, yeah you want to have like a vibrancy to it Something that'll hopefully catch, you know, the viewer's attention, and I, if I remember right, it's usually characterized by relatively thin brush strokes as well. A lot of it's predominantly landscapes. It doesn't have to be, but a lot of it is predominantly landscapes, right? Yes, typically, and um, landscapes, and it could also include some architectural types. Be it, um, I'd include that in landscape. If it's part of a landscape, I would include it in landscape, even if it yeah. is architectural. Yeah, exactly. It's, you know, um, I mean, architecture in itself is its own art. Yeah. It's like it's in the name. Architecture. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, dumb fuck. <laughs> Me. Uh, dumb fucking pun. But, uh, yeah, so when did this kind of come about? Like, what... Which really characterizes, like, the first notable time of us seeing this? Um, I mean, sorry. No. I'm just trying to get my thoughts on that one. So from everything I've uh, read and heard, uh, more or less started back in Paris, France in 1874. There was a art gallery that was kind of like rebelling against the artist academy of the nation. They were like, uh, yeah, fuck off. Because there was a few people that were, uh, of the time, it was very much like realism, realistic, uh, super landscape, super like big, namey, bourgeoisie fucking nonsense, right? And, uh, well, I mean, art itself tends to kind of go in phases. Yeah. But um, this was meant to not so much be abstract as it is kind of like um, just their take on it. And it actually got derived as uh, impression, uh, impressionism and impressionalism <laughs> by somebody trying to actually insult it. They were like, oh, this is just an impression of realism. And uh, they were just like, ha, we like that. Fuck off. It's ours now. Well, a lot of artists usually do something like that. They'll Are you saying that artists would rebel? Well, I'm saying they... In this country? A work out of spite. No. Not well, in this country. Well, it's an energy, it's a passion, an idea that can derive from any type of events that are going on. Hmm. It's true. Like, um, for myself, when this pandemic happened, and there was, you know, this lockdown, and pretty much wasn't going anywhere, you know, so I... I stayed home a lot, and um, I got the. A lot the, of people I, fell into depression. A lot of people took up new hobbies. Yeah, well, I, I, I've been doing oil painting. I started off doing landscapes, and eventually, I actually got bored with it, and I decided it'd be a good idea to challenge myself, push myself, and try new and different things. Okay, so a seascape, not too different, but it, it actually was. But then, um. When this lockdown occurred, 
I suddenly started trying to use that as an influence, also as a way to to deal with the situation that was going on because it, it was just horrible. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, a lot of people fell into depression. A lot of people actually, like, seeked out medical help because they realized that, like, oh, maybe I'm not able to be alone with my thoughts for, like, 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. Hi, how's it going? Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, a lot of people found, like I said, new hot ways to go about things. You said that you did landscapes and then moved on to seascapes and new ways to challenge yourself with it. When did you start getting into art? I would say I was always into art because... Um, as far back as early childhood, going to school, I just like had a very difficult time learning. Um, so basically, my interest wasn't there. The curriculum, just I just wasn't getting it. I mean, I got some stuff enough to get passed through, but like uh, what didn't interest me, I would start doodling, drawing, and then. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like that's most people. Mm. Yeah. Well, the fun thing was, you know, if you had a magazine, you'd put, um, you know, if there was a model who got a picture taken, you know, you'd put a black guy and block out yeah. some of their teeth. That was a start. Yeah. That was, and, that was a yeah. classic. Devil horns, mustache. Devil horns, mustaches, warts, <laughs> sunglasses. Yeah. Fu Manchu. Yep. Yep. Uh, yeah, it was all good. Sometimes you get a Just, little... Sometimes you get a little creative yeah, just, and just put uh, childish little graffiti on uh, magazines and shit, you know. <laughs> oh no! I yeah, and, and then um, you know, put like uh, surgical scars too, like a Frankenstein. Yep, yep, Frankenstein. <laughs> I do the Frankenstein bolts, <laughs> all sorts of silliness. Oh, I had a math, I had a math workbook. It was a soft cover one. Oh, I no. spent the entire. Did you graffiti a textbook? Nah, that's well, wrong. Kids. Worse. Oh, I spent yeah. the whole year. I took my pencil and would just make a hole and just drill the hole straight through it with my pencil. Or pen, just that's graffiti. That's vandalism. Well, yes, that's yeah. wrong. T technically speaking, yes, but yeah. but from a, a lot of art is vandalism. Look at uh, what's his name? Banksy. Yeah, that guy. Yeah, who would have guessed? Honestly, graffiti art, fucking awesome. A lot of times. Yes, absolutely. Especially in the places where you go, how the fuck do you get there? Uh, rope. Yeah, pretty much. Very risky, and I guess you know. Remember, kids, it's only graffiti if the cops don't like it. Otherwise, it's art. A lot of people are getting paid to do graffiti now, though. It's, yeah. Well, there's an, there's an interpretation. Some are really into it, and others are like, oh, man, this is destroying our community, and we can't have that. But, um, well, you know, the assholes who, you know, write uh, this town warrior with the area code, that's, that's just dumb vandalism. That's yeah. not art. Yeah. It, Fucking. There, there is an actual art form to graffiti. And a lot of it's cool. I would say that it is its own unique style. Not impressionalism, which is what we were talking about, but I would say that it's its own unique style and it's very cool in and of itself. Yeah, for graffiti, you now typically I've, I've been doing oil painting for, for the last 12 plus. Yeah, coming up on 12 years now. It's a while. Uh, yeah, it is. I mean, when I first started, I actually started oil painting when I was a late teenager. I was watching Bob Ross and all that. On. Ah, Bob Ross. And the I, resurgence. I, I got totally sucked Happy into it. Happy little bushes. I, I, I just thought it was amazing. Oh, we don't make mistakes here. We just yeah. make happy little acts. There. Did you know he was actually a Air Force drill sergeant or something? Yes, he was. He was. And he yeah. was noted for being extremely mean. Yeah. But then and he's like, when he got out, he's like, all right, I'm done yelling at people. Yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna make up my little, my little accidents. Just like uh, W. Bush. He's into art now. Yeah, he, uh, he does portraits of uh, wounded of the, soldiers yeah. and fallen oh. soldiers, and then he sells them and gives the money back to the families or something like that. Yeah. He's right. actually really talented, too. Well, yeah, I mean, I haven't seen his work yet, but I have heard that he is. I, I think it's he started after he got out of office. So 14 years at some point, you're going to pick up some work, you know. Well, then there's uh, the other one who's still alive. He's doing the houses. The other one? Carter? I want to say John. Yeah, Jimmy, Jimmy Carter. Carter. Yeah. Yeah, he's like 
Ancient. Ancient and still, like, yeah, well hammering in, for Is Bush Sr. still alive? No. Oh, no, no. He passed uh, away, yeah, like, a couple of years ago. Yeah, right. he, uh, So we got Carter, Obama, Bush Jr., Trump, uh, Biden. Uh, yeah, Those are it. the ones that are still alive right now? Yeah, that's it right yeah. now. Yeah. Okay. Clinton's probably going Oh, to yeah, Clinton. I forgot about him. Yeah, he's still around, but he's probably going Good to old Monica. Late. <laughs> oh, she did fucking last week with him, right? Why yeah. Is, don't touch saxophones. Don't touch saxophones, kid. <laughs> I think he does art, too, right? Uh, well, he, Does saxophone count? Music is its own art, but it's a different well, type no, of Well, no, I think um, all politicians are artists, but I'm offended by that because I think it's an oxymoron because they're bullshit artists. Well, that too, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, Clinton I was good at a saxophone. And True, yeah. I'm Bush sure Jr. He's... is good at art now, like legit art. And, uh... Yep. I'm sure That's Obama's it. got a talent. <laughs> I'm sure, I think Obama's actually really good at basketball. Not trying to be racist, but I think he was surprisingly what? really good. Why are you racist? Not well, just. Well, well, they're all they're all human. They they have uh, their interests and hobbies. You know. And they, what politicians are human? I thought they were part of the lizard folk. I don't believe politicians are human. I don't count them. But that's a personal belief. Well, a conspiracy theory that I came up with on my own: Biden's really not our president. I think he's a manufactured robot from China, <laughs> and he's deliberately. Sabotaging was, America. Was this during his vice presidency as well, or did he get it replaced in between there? I, th I think it's more evident now because. So he got replaced at some point? This is Biden 2.0? <laughs> Mecca Biden. <laughs> I mean, look at Zuckerberg. They, 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 they started. Oh, he is 100% a lizard. <laughs> Who the fuck keeps barbecue sauce on their shelf? To be fair, humans, I, humans have the barbecue keep, sauce. They I, like this. What else do they do? Uh, bookshelves, yes. Did you see him when he did the uh, the Hawaii trip all completely covered in fucking sunscreen? He oh, my so God, ridiculous. it was so silly. He looked like Data from fucking Star Trek. <laughs> yeah, especially oh. with those eyes. Oh, oh they, they just oh, like... Yeah. Uh, They're beady little eyes. Mm. Very, very uh, alien-like. Alien Susan, we love you. We're not coming after you. Please don't block no, us. Susan's legit. Although I will fight you. I'll fight anybody. <laughs> I think I still have active duels going against a lot of active duel uh, threats against a lot of people. I will duel anybody. Speaking of duels, that sounds like uh, the 1800s. You know what else was in the 1800s? Impressionalism. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're getting yeah, back. Segway. Yeah, stumbling. Ugh. Anyway. So, you want to mention a couple of the notable artists? <coughs> sure. Um... The three that I've brought to the table here, I did all this research. I, I didn't know this. The first person to actually do research besides Paulie, and Paulie's notes were some half written oh, books. Paulie did not do any research. He <laughs> just wrote down MK Ultra and CIA. what DMT is. That's. And it. then he like, also like horribly misspelled Sculpamine too. Like, yes. Skull -wall 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 -wall. <laughs> yes. Awful. Check out our something down psychedelics. Or don't. It was it's actually, not safe for work. No. This is probably our most safe for work right now. <laughs> Maybe guns. Guns. Don't bring guns to work. Listen about guns at work. Well, unless you're... A range speed. safety officer. In which case, bring guns to work. You know what? It's okay. We'll talk about artists. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> one that I was researching, one of three anyway... Uh, Paul Cezanne, an impressionist who... Um, I'm not familiar Cezanne? with him. Wait a minute. No, Wait. Claude Monet. Well, Monet I know. Yeah, yeah. I think a I, lot of people know Monet. Or at well, least I, know uh, of Monet. I mean, I know the difference between Monet and Mayonnaise. It's an old well, that's YouTube joke from way no. back in the day that a lot of people don't remember. Sounds more like culinary arts. Cool. Monet. <laughs> yeah, um... Oh, geez. He's, he's bringing out the glasses. Yeah, do a quick... Uh, yeah. Says the one wearing glasses. Yeah, but I have to. All right, born in November 14, 1840. Lived to the good right year. Beer. Yeah, and made That was it, a good year. Made it to well. December 5th, 
1926, so almost 100 years since we that lost That was an them. okay year. Yeah. Born in Paris. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. And his mother died at the age of 15. His, his interest and inspiration came from oceans and the rugged coastline of northern France, which had a profound effect on him. As a youth, he received instructional received instructions at um, the College of Har- Harvey. Yeah, Harvey. Yeah, yeah. It's French, and as we all know, French isn't real, so we don't Just actually like have. To, yeah, so we don't have to actually pronounce it correctly. Kawa croissant, croissant. Yeah, waffling, Monet. It's just a waffle scene. So, Monet, started with Impressionism or moved into it? Um, f- from what I was seeing, and I was scrolling through quite a few p- photos, it seemed to be like a merge. You know. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of landscapes. That's a mic. And, um, Sorry. you know, he did, he did his scenes and, um, Monet became friends with the artist Eugene Baudin, a landscape artist famous for his scenes in northern French coast, coastal towns. And he encouraged him to paint outdoors, which came to be known as en plein air. Simply translates to uh, painting outside. Something I actually got to do because one of the art schools I go to, I haven't been to in a while. They had like a little nice Sunday afternoon. You know, the weather was nice. We were outside, set up tables, and I had no idea what this meant. So anyway, um, so uh, painting in the air, which is outside. Yeah, uh, that, that's pretty much where a lot of the I'm finding that the impressionists were getting their inspiration and doing their work best. It was uh, trying to be more lively, more uh, more in tune with nature, more of the moment type of a thing, right? Just like yeah, a because... Uh, yeah. Um, stuffy studio. Yeah, I mean, studio, you know, the walls start caving in on you, which uh, <laughs> that goes back to, um, again, you know, when we had the COVID lockdown, and nobody was going anywhere. And um, I'm in the original Levitt house, and my studio is in the office, which is an eight by twelve room. And but fortunately, you know, I'm I'm so into it. You know, once once I get the momentum going, time becomes irrelevant. You know, I I could sit there for hours at a time. But you know. After a while, you know, the charm does kind of wear off and you need to break out and... No, I get it. And, yeah, yeah, you know, basically me. take a break. But uh, it was kind of difficult to do during the lockdown because... Everything was shut down. You, yeah. You shut, couldn't go anywhere. Shut down, restricted, you know, it's, it's like... Okay. Yeah, the world was on pause. But, um, you know, that, that, that's where I got my ideas to come up with paintings to reflect the times that we were going through. Speaking of, do you want to plug your paintings? Like, where we can find you? Sure. I'm on uh, Instagram, Raging Cajun. How do you spell it? R-A-Y J-U-N space Cajun. C-A-J-U-N. Alright. And, um, yeah, you'll find some really cool paintings there. And f- you go all the way back, you know, it's little bit of um a little bit of a trek yeah a few posts yeah yeah i got quite a few and um the earliest stuff that's when i still had um the landscape influence and i have done paintings outside my own backyard but to bring everything back and forth it just kind of it's a lot yeah but um a lot of the inspiration i've gotten a few years back is uh one of my Biggest dreams came true. I had some money in the bank, and me and my family, we took a vacation all the way out to the West Coast, flew out to Seattle, and drove down to San Francisco. 
and just absolutely incredible the things I got to see. And um, at times I felt like I didn't even need to look at pictures because it was just like that, you know, it was like tattooed on me. Yeah. And um, there was quite a few coastal areas that were really beautiful. I mean, th this kind of settles a little, in my mind anyway, it settles a debate as far as traveling. There are those who really enjoy the beach. I like it, but I prefer them. I prefer the mountains myself. Same. Yeah. But uh, traveling on... I don't mind the water. I just hate sand. It's so coarse. It gets everywhere. It's rough and irritating. Yeah. Well, it is nice, though, at first. But then looking at the water at well, it does kind of... Well, having worked at a beach, doing work on a beach, it sucks. Same. Yeah, we used to... When we were with the... Uh, when we were with a job that we're not going to mention. Public... Public job. Yeah. Okay. Working on public beaches. You learn you, the beaches kind of suck in the background. Yeah, beaches not that great, and uh, the people on beaches typically also not that great. Mm. Yeah, people don't so, know how to clean up after themselves. Ah, uh, yes. We'll, we'll phrase it like that. Although, if you got a metal detector, you could score a few bucks. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can make a couple bucks. But uh, I think doing that job, you're not supposed to turn. Whatever. Anyway. <laughs> well, yeah. I'm. Yeah. Back to um, that. Sorry. Dr driving on the coast of uh, the West Coast on Highway 101. On one side, you got the Pacific Ocean. On the other side, you got the forest and the mountains. Yeah. I mean, Pacific <coughs> Coast Highway is awesome. Oh yeah, I, I no, give man. anything to be able to drive back on that road again. It's just absolutely mesmerizing. And, um, I still liked upstate. Upstate's beautiful. More specifically, upstate New York. There's a few upstates. Uh, yeah, yeah. Remember, technically, <laughs> this is global. True. Well, in terms of up, upstate New York, that's basically the fucking south, but... Uh, <laughs> politically, maybe, sure. <laughs> Geographically? No. Geographically, it is not the south. But in terms it's of very cult, much in terms colder. of culture and uh, culture, in terms of culture and uh, politics, North fucking New York is basically the South. Yeah, it's just North Georgia. Yeah, <laughs> beautiful though, fucking beautiful. Oh, it's shit. lovely. Yeah, great scenery. I've never Especially been during to the uh, fall the falls, and spring. Yeah. I've been meaning to go to the, see the falls eventually. Have not been to Niagara Falls, no. Apparently, the best way to do it is to go up to and do it from Canada because the New York yeah. uh, the New York side kind of sucks. Have you been to Niagara Falls? Yes, I have. Can you agree? Uh, we actually, my wife and I, that was our first vacation as a married couple. We, we were just married um, that year. It was 2002. And, uh, yeah, our, our wedding anniversary was just the other day. 21 years. Congrats. Yeah, thank Congrats. you. <laughs> and um, that was our first vacation as a married couple. Her... Now it's her mom's place. Her mom has a summer place in the Adirondack Park, so that kind of breaks up the, the dr monotony of the driving. Okay. Yeah, that yeah, that helps out. Yeah, because the drive from here to there... Uh, it's long. It's very long. You need to break it up. Yeah, and that's exactly what we did. And then the next morning after, you know, we stayed at, you know, my in-law's summer cabin, then we went to... Niagara Falls, and we stayed on the Canadian side. It was just absolutely incredible. Mm. Canadians and are better than America. <coughs> confirmed by <coughs> confirmed by man sitting in middle. For some Thanks, Ray. Mm -hmm. I never said they were better. I, was just, <laughs> it, 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 I actually did see both because uh, we were driving around, and somehow or another, we wound up... Uh, I didn't get off at the right exit, and um, mm. Been there. We, we were in Buffalo. Who would have guessed? That's a place I want to go. Have not been to Buffalo. I oh. hear it's very snowy. I want to go for the uh, the wings. And they have bills. Oh, the yeah, Buffalo Bills, the, yeah. The, ah. only, the only true New York team. You know, you got the Jersey Jets and Jersey Jets. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> They're technically in. Uh, the, no, wait, didn't the Islanders move? Rangers? Aren't Rangers in the city? What's yeah. the hockey team that's, like, literally out of the Coliseum? Or was out of the Coliseum? Islanders? Yeah, Islanders. Yeah. Well, the Rangers like, are in the city, right? Yeah, MSG. Yeah, so not the only New York, not the only New York team. We have others. 
City Field well, it's is different, in the Bronx. Different, um, Brooklyn. Although I guess the city is different not New York. sports. The city yeah, is oh, just based. sure, fine. We're yeah. we're not including the you know the non sports team. Only your sports team. Oh, we're talking about just football specifically, I guess. Whatever. Yeah. I you, guess. you kind of branched out to the hockey and yeah. the Knicks. Oh, well, Mets. In terms of Yankees, football. I think the Yankees and Mets share a stadium now. Do they? I don't know. I don't, I don't sports care. ball. I don't give a shit about sports. It's all Greek to me. Uh, I watched the Super Bowl half of the commercials and half because it's the one time football is mildly interesting. Plus the halftime show sometimes is interesting. Art. We were talking about art, weren't we? Uh, Monet. Uh, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and rationalism. Yeah. And, um... <laughs> yeah, Monet had a... As I was talking about um, obsession, and that's with the water lilies, and you you do one scene, and for for myself, you finish it, but then um, you know you ask yourself, is this really how I like it? Is this how I want it to be? And um, there there have been plenty of paintings where I just like throw the hands up I'm like I, I really don't know what to do more with this you know if, if I put more into it then I feel like I wind up taking away from it so you gotta find that balance exactly and um you know each artist you know whatever you're creating you know if this is your time I mean I started out doing this as a hobby as a way of you know, dealing with the everyday pressures in life and um, being able to create a particular scene. Like I'm thinking about um, like the West Coast, there are areas where you're elevated a bit farther up and you're looking down and the, the roads are curvy and whining and you really got to pay attention to the driving. And my daughter and her cousin, they were kind of nervous at the time because, you know, it's trying to keep up with the flow of traffic but at the same time I'm trying to like observe everything too and yeah I mean sometimes you just gotta take in the scenery right yeah. well yeah there, there, there were plenty of moments where you were like oh I just gotta pull over I just wanna get out and walk around you know anytime you go driving a long distance it's always a good idea to do that yes <clears throat> but um that's part of it, but then the other part of it is to just actually be able to stop and appreciate what you're looking at, where you are. And for any artist, you know, you, you want to be able to absorb, in terms of nature, you want to ab absorb the beauty of it and to be able to bring it onto the canvas and create it as you were seeing it. It's very uh, satisfying, I, f I find. We mentioned Monet. Obviously, there's a few more that, you know, are involved in impressionism. It's not just Monet and that's it. Who else do we have? I, like, I know Van Gogh is somebody who could be listed. Who else is there, though? Uh, one artist that kind of strikes a chord for me, it hits home, is Frida Cole. She was one of Mexico's greatest artists. And she was born in 1907. Hmm. Coyoacan, Mexico City. She grew up in a family home and referred to it as a blue house, Casa Azul. Her father was a descendant of Germany and her mother, Matilda, was half Amerindian and half Spanish, and she had two older sisters and one younger sister. And um, the reason why I, I, I chose Frida Cole is because through my own situation, I'm I'm dealing with MS, and you know that, that's a horrible disease. We can go on for hours with that, but I'm going to stick with Frida Cole for now. And um, she actually had polio. And her right leg and foot was actually smaller than the left. 
And she basically wore long dresses to cover it up. And which, you know... I anyone, thought it was just the style back then. Probably, yeah. But, um... Well, I, 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 I mean, think I know her through the... Uh, I think in... Selma Hayek movie? Yeah. I, yeah, I, I think in her case, because, you know, when you got some kind of disability or something, especially back then, it's only a, until recent where, you know, everything is being put out there. But, you know, not, not so long ago... People, you know, don't really want other people to know, you know, what their problems are because, you know, they, they just... It was more personal. It was more closed off. Yeah. Everybody has their own way of adjusting and handling situations that they're going through. So then um, she actually managed to get past the polio. Her father encouraged her to get involved with sports. She actually played soccer, and even more so, she was into swimming, and even after that, she got into wrestling, which was sort of unheard of back then for a girl to get into that. It still sounds kind of... <laughs> I don't picture... Well, then again, these days, anything can really go. If Barbie has taught us anything, a woman, women can do anything. By the way, have you seen the trailer for the new Barbie movie? No. It's, I have no interest. It's actually not bad. They do an homage to a 20, uh, 2001 Space Odyssey. Sorry, digressing. Oh, that's okay. I was just taking a quick look at the notes. Um, she, um, she attended a national preparatory school in Mexico City in the year of 1922, and there was only 35 female students enrolled at that time. She became, she actually became famous for her outspokenness and bravery. And at this school, the famous Mexican muralist Diego Rivera, that, that's who she met for the first time. And Diego Rivera was working on a mural for the creation on the school campus. And she actually just like fell head over heels in love with him. Or at least that's how it seemed, because she told a friend that someday she's going to marry him. You know, careful what you wish for. So the same year, she joined a group of students who shared similar political, intellectual views. But before Diego Rivera, she fell in love with the leader of the group, Alejandro Gomez Arias. And on a September afternoon, she traveled with Gomez and suffered a tra tragic bus accident. And this was rather bad, really. The, the guardrail seriously injured her. Yeah, it was a steel handrail, which impaled her through her hip. Oof. God. Yeah. And her, and her pelvis, too. They were both fractured. Th this was obviously horrific on terms of physical and psychological. So she, she wound up in a Red Cross hospital for about a couple weeks, and then she returned home for f recovery, which took like a couple months. She was in a full body cast. But from there, it was actually when she started to paint. Her, f her father got the art material that she needed basically a box of paints and some brushes, and they even made a special easel for her so she could do her painting. I mean, I'm, in a full body cast, I can't imagine. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I can't even begin to Probably imagine how... Fingers or toes or some shit. With the little toesy-woesies? <laughs> to I've seen people do some shit with their toes. Yeah, you go online long enough, you'll see. <laughs> oh, jeez, we're... You ever see people do archery with their feet? Only feet. Subscribe to my only feet. <laughs> well, raging back, Cajun. Well, back in <laughs> back in the day, I used to be able to pick stuff up with my feet because you know, God forbid, you know, you bend over and pick something up, and it's like, oh no, I can grab it with my toes and curl it up and just yeah. move my leg halfway up, and I'll have it. Because <laughs> you know, you're just trying to be. You're getting kick the broom. You're up trying to be dexterous. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that that's long gone. 
And, um, you know. Yeah. Having been over 30, I can tell you it's starting to get hard to bend over you. Your gut doesn't help. It's all right. I'm also fat. Diet starts never. Not sponsored. Uh, Rascal Apparel. Not sponsored. Not sponsored by the Coke. Not sponsored. Although I do like their uh, stuff. Rascal Apparel. If you want to sponsor us, please do. Uh, really should see if the weed guy will sponsor us. Get us a sponsorship by weed. I think we would be the first legal weed sponsorship. No, probably not. But at least in New York, maybe. I've never we digress. To him. We digress. Anyway, sorry. Yeah, well, sort of like a informal commercial there. <laughs> so anyway, after um, <clears throat> after her recovery and eventually, you know, the full body cast came off, she wound it up. She wound up reconnecting with Diego Rivera back in 1928 and she asked him to evaluate her work and he encouraged her to take yeah he basically encouraged her the, the two started a romantic relationship despite her mother's objection and then shortly after they actually did wind up getting married and with Diego Rivera's work they often moved around a lot first they were in San Francisco. Then they wound up in they wound up in New York City, and it was there that uh, Diego Rivera got a commission from Nelson Rockefeller. Yeah, it was a commission. So, like That's Rockefeller, good, Rockefeller. Yeah, Nelson Rock. Yeah, Nelson Rockefeller. Yeah, it was the early nineteen twenties. That's good money. That is good money. That's yeah, good money. Well, still an artist, so maybe. Depends on what he does for him. Oh, you know what yeah, he does Yeah, well... Doing. Watch that mouth. The hands, the fingers. Yeah, and the thing is, with a commission... I'm going to get a little sidetracked. You know, digression is seems to be the key word for us right now. Stumbling. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I found that commissions can be really difficult to do because, you know, you have a client. They, they're willing to pay pay you to do a, some kind of creation, whatever it is. I I but, you, you know, it's, they're the ones, you know, they're, they're kind of in charge. You know, they're your client, and you got to... You got to listen to them. Yeah, you got to do it the way they want. And, you know, if you're good enough, you know, you can you can pull it off. I, I've actually had a few commissions myself. It's a, it's a bit of pressure, but thankfully... You know, I was able to, I've been able to pull them off. You know, the first one is like, oh, my God, somebody actually. Somebody likes my stuff enough in order to pay me. Yeah, they, they, they want something specific. So I was like, you know, the first time I was like, oh, I don't know. I don't know about this. But then this is where you say, fuck it. You know, what's the worst that can happen? It doesn't work out and you have to turn around and say, sorry, I tried. I couldn't do it. Or better yet, as uh, dealing with um, dealing with a lot of issues, I um, you know I managed to think positive and just come up with a strategic game plan and break things down to uh, what sections you you're gonna work out. And th this this comes from um, all those times I've watched Bob Ross. It's basically technique. Technique. What, yeah. As it turns out, yeah. Uh, art is a lot of technique. <laughs> well, yeah. Technique. Op, yeah. Call me Dr. Obvious. But, you know, basically I, the thing that I was able to catch on to is, at least with landscapes, you know, you start off with the subject area the furthest away and you're just basically bringing everything closer into you. Hmm. And then, you know, stuff that's, like, further away, you're not going to worry so much about the detail. Yeah, you got to play the scale. Yeah, just uh, give a good la, 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 good la, la, idea la. what what's actually going on, what it's like. And then um, as you're getting in closer, then then you kind of worry about the details. So anyway, um, getting back to Diego Rivera, who was doing a commission for Nelson Rockefeller. Rivera decided to include Vladimir Lenin in this painting, who is a communist leader. We very briefly spoke about him on the Joseph Stalin episode. Ah, go oh. back. 
So that did, that did not go over too well with not Nelson Rockefeller. So basically, he put a stop to it. And it was actually even painted over. So consequent. Oh, that's a dick move. Yeah. Well, I mean, when you're paying a lot of money, you want things to be exactly right. Yeah, you have yeah. a client. I mean, I mean, the, I think, you know, getting rid of his art because he worked for somebody you disagree with is a bit of a dick move. I mean, to be fair, Lennon sucked, but you're you gotta take the artist away from the art sometimes. Well, no. Getting back to um, the idea of a commission, you have a client that's that's paying you to do what they want. So now you, your choice is, yeah, I want to do this. I'll, you know, do whatever they want. I'll freeform it a little bit. No, no, you will not. I mean, you could put in some twists and spins, but um, it all has to get approved. Well, in the, in this case, I think Diego Rivera. Not a very smart move, I don't think. Well, yeah, I mean, how do you even decide to include Lennon in that? Like, what did he have? Even, what was he trying to get commissioned? Like, did you were you able to find out in the notes what he initially wanted? Uh, did it, I? I only really saw a mural. It didn't really. I I didn't see anything specific. I I just Nothing uh, but hammer and sickles. I. I <laughs> <laughs> all, all I really saw, which I brought to the table, is uh, <laughs> that you know he include tried to include you know a Soviet leader, and Nelson Rockefeller wasn't having it. So okay, con- so he tried to bring him in the project, yeah, yeah, not yeah, just yeah. worked with him at some point in general. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's a different story. Yeah, misconstrued the facts there. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like, uh, you know, you go to work, and how many times have I heard throughout my career, it's like, uh, leave your home problems at home, and when you leave work, leave your work problems there. But I mean, I, I think everybody, at some time or another, they wind up... I don't up, know why uh, you'd want to bring a communist dictator to your job, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't. That's a weird flex. Hey, I just so happen to have Stalin with me today to help me work. What the fuck? <laughs> well, maybe he's he brings... our job, all right? I mean, to be fair, if he had brought maybe, say, Hitler with him to help him do the art, I'd be like, okay, that slightly makes sense. Hitler, he was an artist. Yes, you're absolutely right. By the right. way, don't ever say no to letting an Austrian to art school. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> there might be dire consequences. <laughs> uh, whoops. But anyway, <laughs> so after botching up that commission, which you know again, commission you got to do it the way they want it. You know, if you want to do something outrageous and whatever you want to do, then you know that's your piece, and then then you got to put it out there and hope others will dig it enough to want it. Ultimately, that's well. I, I've always been under the belief when it comes to art and artists, when you like when you want something. You give them what you want, but at the same time, you're also accepting the fact that they're going to do it their way. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you're paying for that person's interpretation of what you want. I mean, if but I... But if you just decide, eh, let's include Lennon, that's a little different. Like, come on. Yeah, that's, yeah that sounds like it's completely hey, off, I want a off pic- the course. I want a picture of my dog. Sure thing. You mind if I include this tree? The fuck? Well, maybe the dog wants a tree because, you know, he's got to go. This is fair. Dogs do like trees. Yeah. Trees and fire hydrants. So when do we actually get to Frida starting her impressionism work? Oh, yeah. Well, this is the the podcast about impressionism. Yeah. Well, after that, after her then husband screwed that up, they had no choice but to move back to Mexico. The marriage wasn't too usual either. They had been keeping separate homes and studios throughout the years. So, hmm. yeah, and this kind of led to a little bit of hanky-panky on the side of... on Artists being promiscuous? Never heard of that. And yeah, well, Diego Rivera, I didn't get any information on that. I guess maybe... <laughs> With a name like Diego Rivera, how could he not? Yeah, Chicks dig artists. 
That's what I just said. Yeah, so eventually Frida got wind of this and obviously it didn't go over very well. So she ended up, she had very long hair, so she ended up cutting it short to... Which at the time was not a usual thing. Right. No. And so then, um, yeah, it's basically to show her how she was feeling betrayed. So I guess that's coping mechanism. You know, everybody handles situations however they do. Yeah, women seem to do it with their... Yeah, so she also, she was, she was hopeful to have children, but she wasn't able to due to the bus accident. And this kind of really weighed her down a bit. So the couple had, they actually, this is basically an odd couple. They, they were on and off, basically separating, back together. And I mean, all. some people be like that. It don't always be like that, but sometimes it do. Sometimes it be. Not so, like, I remember Frida did a lot of, uh, like, impressionistic self-portraits is what uh, yeah. one of the things she's kind of famous for. That and surrealism. Yeah. Uh, one, of, one of the striking paintings that I saw, it was after she had her miscarriage, and she did a self-portrait of herself laying in the bed, half naked, and baby coming out. So, Jeez. yeah, that, that that that's a really powerful image. Yeah, yeah. So that that there's some serious serious grieving going on. I mean, husband's cheating on her. They're on and off, and then she has a miscarriage. So I I guess uh, you know, her way of grieving and handling it was to basically put it on canvas. I mean, I, I kind of do that for myself through, um, I mean, I thankfully I didn't have polio because, you know, vaccine back in the day, <laughs> have no choice. But, uh, you know, battling with the MS, I, I kind of, I'm just starting to branch out into anatomy section. I'm currently working on, on this project. It's uh, sort of like a skeleton. I, I, I did one pretty like recently it. and um i went with garrett to this party out east and uh he has a friend who also happens to have ms and it was her birthday and you know he's like you know it'd be great if you know she, she could have this one so i was like oh wow not that one but i did it anyway and then afterwards i was like i can't believe i parted with that one so then um you know, my thought at the time was, well, you know, if I'm going to part with this one, then this is going to help push me to start up another one, which is kind of what I got going on. And um, I don't know how many people know it, but, you know, if those who know me, they'll probably f remember when I say March is MS Awareness a month. So I have a, it's a fairly intense painting going on. So my way of bringing about attention it's got a it's got a lot of the aspects that are going on it, it, there's a lot of inflammation going on because those with ms have a different immune system where it it basically is overactive it, it incorrectly identifies a virus and attacks it and on our brains and spines, we have uh, trillions of fiber optic nerves, which are surrounded by myelin, which is a fatty substance. And if you picture, picture this being one of them, but then there's like a burn mark. That's kind of like what's going on. And then within the your brain and spinal cord, there's lesions that basically they show up on the MRIs. So I kind of got that going on, and it's. It's like a nice dark blue background, and the brain is like a nice vibrant reddish orange, and got the rib cage. And I've been working on this one for about a month and a half now. Typically, my paintings they they vary. They can they can take a week or so, but this one I'm I'm really like pouring it into it and. 
It, it, it'll be coming up sometime in March, and I still got time to decide if there's anything more that I want to do with it, but I think I'm coming to that point where it's like I got to put the brush down and move on to something else. Yeah, I and did not know that much about it. Oh, yeah. Um, before finally being diagnosed, I think most people, they've heard of MS. Some might know a little more than others. Me, I didn't know anything until I finally got diagnosed. And that's when I just kind of... Dove the, into it, yeah. Yeah, because of dealing with this for a very long time, pretty much half my life, and not knowing, you know, you know something's wrong, but you just don't know what. And then finally, it took um, me breaking my foot to finally say, hey, I got mobility issues. What else yeah, is going something's, on? Something's not right. Let me figure it out. Yeah, basically that was my wake-up call. It was time. Yeah. I finally admitted to myself, I, I got I to gotta find out what's going on. And it took a very long time. Granted, I dropped the ball along the way because between insurance companies and... Medical stuff in stuff. America is bullshit. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. Between stuff. Yeah. But, um, you don't have to explain. Yeah, I mean, finally, you know, finally got the, finally got that diagnosed, you know. At first, you know, when my doctor suggested that, you know, he thinks I have this, initially it was like a bomb going on. Oh, my God. But then um, I thought about it. I was like, well, you know, it's, it's no shocker, really. But then, you know, after doing more tests and, you know, I finally got the confirmation that, that this is what it has. And um, I basically learned about Frida Cole because I was going to art school in Woodbury, and I'm hoping to return back in maybe April or so because, you know, it's, it's, it's a good vibe hanging out with other artists. You know, you get to see... You get to feed off them, vibe with them, yeah. Yeah, yeah, th th there's like a really good energy that way. It, it gives me an opportunity to to hit the pause button on basically all my problems. Or I could do the opposite and put my problems onto the canvas, which I do that quite often as well. Because with MS, it, I, I also say there's multiple symptoms. And a lot of times, I, cognition kind of kicks in or not. It's kind of like a think about you be in a house and the electrical system is off. The lights are on, but then they're dimming, they're flickering, or they're getting really bright. There's like an inconsistency. And I tell people all the time, I can literally sit in front of a blank canvas for an hour or two, just like, huh? And then all of a sudden, boom, I get that aha moment. This is what I'm going to do. I immediately come, I got this plan, the wheels are moving forward, and I got the ideas, and I, I just like roll up the sleeves, I'm, I'm right in there. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, I didn't get uh, all the information. It, thankfully, it wasn't too much of an overwhelming article. But um, Fri right. Frida Cole and her husband, Diego Rivera, Leon Tr Trotsky, who actually spent some time at um, wait, wait. Casa, Casa, uh, Casa, Casa Alzu. Blue yeah, House. so what is up with them and Soviet dictators? So fun fact, we did touch on this with Stalin sending uh, Trotsky to Mexico as part of his punishment because... It was, uh, I think it was Lenin, yeah. Yeah, so... So we very loosely covered this. It's so weird that it ties back with Stalin because we covered it and how Trotsky got sent to Mexico because Stalin wanted to uh, gain all the power for himself. Oh, so he got rid of a lot of the old guard people. That's he right. got rid of the guys that would oppose him when Lenin died. And that was first and foremost, Leon Trotsky. In fact, Trotsky ended up having a few affairs in Mexico I think one of which being with, like, Frida or something like that. Yes, you're exactly right. And 
he ended up uh, he he was like this folk hero in Mexico, Trotsky, and then they were just like, yeah, no, it's so weird. It all ties back. <laughs> Seriously, what the is birds that? aren't real. The birds aren't real. <laughs> Turn the freaking frogs gay. The, what is up with the freaking fucking Soviets though? Uh, so Mexico during the 1900s was also kind of undergoing the whole communist po- uh, potential, but. As it turns out, a lot of gangs and a lot of American influence was like, ha ha, no. So oh, the it gangs was, in Mexico are no fucking joke. Yeah. So it was uh, very much just along the lines of like, yeah, no. But, you know, they thought it was a good idea because cartel. Uh, if there is one, if there is one group that hates fucking like fascists and Soviets, it's fucking criminals. No. Oh, ma- did you? We used to have a uh, used to uh, we used the mafia to actually get influence for uh, with uh, to help us get into uh, Italy during World War Two. Yeah, yeah. We used like uh, mafia connections and shit to like help get like inf- like infiltrate. Uh, it's fucking weird. Yeah, and World War Two ties back <laughs> in with guns. It's all going full circle. Oh. Oh. Fascist space Nazis. <laughs> Freaking Gundam. <laughs> did you we'll see tie it all back about, together. Did you see the movie about the fucking Nazis using space sharks and shit on the moon? Yes. <laughs> and then marijuana. <laughs> that grows in Mexico. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> do you have a do you have a thing to say about marijuana? Oh. In fact, during 1937, uh Henry J. Anslinger, I'm going to pronounce it right this time, Henry J. Anslinger banned it because Monster. he was so racist against Mexicans. Like Frida. Frida! Bring oh! it back again. We're bringing it back. The monster that is uh, Anslinger. Oh, my God. That what? piece of shit. He was a douche. Oh, my God. And Go check out that episode, marijuana episode. You'll hear some very racist quotes. Not actual police. This is what some old racist fuckhead used to think. 1937. Harry J. Anslinger. He died in 1969. Thank God. Fuck that guy. Fuck that guy. Anyway. Actually, he died in uh, 72, I think it was. His Too late. Yeah. Should have been earlier. Yeah. Anyway. It's so weird that we're tying it all back together. It's all coming back now. Bring it back now, y'all. What's the difference between Impressionism and Surrealism? Can you tell me a little bit about that? I understand it's, like, art is subjective, but, like, obviously there's some different things. Nobody's going to look at, like, uh, the kidney bean in fucking Chicago. I don't and think that's actually supposed to be called that. But no, yeah. it's not. Not at all. And he hates it being referred to as that. But I don't know what it's actually called. I think it's, like, a tribute to love or something like that. No idea. Uh, but nobody's going to look at that and be like, ah, yes, this is a realism portrait of Seattle, Washington. Like, nobody's going to look at that. So can we talk a little bit about, like, some of the differences in surrealism and impressionism and abstract and cubism and things like that? Well, I think um, impressionism is, to me, is like capturing, capturing a specific moment in time. And surrealism... I haven't really gotten too involved with that. Um, cubism, as many would know, that uh, that was a Picasso thing, as well as another artist, George Brock, and it kind of. I, I I see like a simplicity, but yet complex at the same time, and yeah, it's really weird, Picasso and that i i i don't understand it no i've never been much into the abstract which for i like the abstract i just eh. which, a- abstract i find is a 50 50 i'm I either well well I let's either, just quickly talk about what abstract actually is abstract is things not realism effectively can we basically just define it as that like well the the, the first artist that anyone would know in terms of abstract, would be Jackson Pollock. I mean, yeah, that's probably the first one that most people would mention, and then maybe like 
Picasso. And then from there, people would be like, oh, well, we can kind of go down the line and be like, uh, uh, let's go with, like, uh, Banksy. I don't know. Let's go with, like, uh, uh, sculptures. Let's go with, because a lot of sculpture ends up being abstract. So, yeah, sculpture is very interesting. They could also be surreal, but a lot of it ends up being abstract. Well, I, I would suppose... Um whatever type of medium that you're going with. Like way back in the day, I used to work in a welding company. I became friends with one of the welders there, and he's a recovering alcoholic. And in order to keep himself out of trouble, he would stay after hours, and when everybody left, he would just weld up... Um, Art? Basically me- sculpture. metal sculpture, yeah. Huh? He, he would do like faces and figures and stuff like that and oh you could do some really nifty shit with welding oh yeah, yeah. that yeah. and silver brazing yeah so you know i was glad you know i became friends with him you know i learned learned quite a bit from him i actually i learned how to weld really and um i gave a go with that career but it it wasn't for you no because my my heart and passion was it was just not there because I was just like a late teenager, early 20s, and pretty much everybody's like, you got to go to school for uh, something. Yes. Mm. I, you know, I was... I Moving was, away from the trades. Yeah. Look at us now, Mom. Yeah, so the idea of like actually going to school for it, I was just like, I don't know. I, just, I, I was hopeful, you know, when he got a job with the Transit Authority... That it would be able to try yeah, and pull you through, too? That, yeah, that, that, that tells you that created an opening. So I approached my immediate supervisor, and I said, hey, I already, I already know. How to mo- do most of the joints. And um, he was like, all right, let me, go, <coughs> let me go speak with my supervisor. And they said, no, I got pissed off. I got a, another job elsewhere, and it just... It was a complete waste of time. That, that, if I have any regrets in my own life, it was uh, wasting so much time in low-paying, dead-end job, really. Cause I mean, it wasn't a waste of time. You ended up learning a lot. Yeah, I did it's learn. It's a useful skill, and I'm sure you learned a lot from the experience as well. I mean, right. it, you may not think that it went anywhere, but like you never would have made friends. You never would have... Been able to be like, hey, look, this is my first introduction with somebody making art in front of me with the sculptures, possibly, you know? You gotta try and look at it that way. Oh, yeah, I mean, I mean because I uh, right ev- with eventually. A public service job is a great way to figure out how to dress life. Yeah. I learned a lot how to deal with people through that. <laughs> yeah, Especially dealing with the public sometimes. <laughs> that, and surprisingly, the CO job. Yeah. So, the CO one actually taught me great customer service skill, but that's a different story. Yeah, customer service jobs taught me customer service skills. I don't have them. They just taught me what they are. <laughs> the yeah, well, suck. the the saying that the customer is always right, I completely disagree with. <laughs> well, it's depending. it's an outdated phrase that was meant for something else. Yeah, in, in regards to as we're going to bring it back to, art and commissioning things, the customer is right. You might not and like... technically th- food, too, yeah. Yeah. You might not agree with how his vision is, but in his mind, he is right, and he deserves it. You know, if it has to go to somebody else in order to be worked, by all means, I, I know plenty of artists, t- tattooists, just in general, who, if they don't feel comfortable doing a piece done the way that you want it, they'll just send you on to somebody else who they recommend doing it that way. Which... But what if you want uh, Bowser riding a surfboard, playing a double neck guitar? With sunglasses? Doing a little thing? Doing a little... With a giant pot leaf! <laughs> and a cross, because I'm really religious, because my mom died when I was young. <laughs> He's making a bit reference. Or doing a bit reference, I'm sorry. <laughs> the tattoo thing. But yeah... Like, in that case, I would say that, yeah, like, the customer is right in having something get commissioned, you I know? Mean, 
Well, the customer is getting things their way because they're paying you. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, yeah. I would say that the customer is right in that case. <laughs> Obviously, you have to be able to work with them, and it's not just like a, all right, I have to do everything by the books. At that point, you may as well just be doing painting by letter, uh, painting by numbers. Like, yeah. if they're that set on what it is, it's a painting by numbers. But if you're I willing to let them have some creative expression. One of my favorite uh, story about uh, artists being creative expression. You know this one from da uh, from Pops. Uh, Von Dutch with the pinstriping. Mm. The guy was... Okay, so Von Dutch was a famous like artist and he did like uh, pinstriping. Like, uh, During the 1950s and 60s custom culture from the 60s revolution with like gassers and things like that. But just that giant rise, just so you have a little bit of context. He... Uh, some guy wanted him to do, I think it was like a motorcycle or a car or something like that, like, but do a pinstriping job on it. And he was like really being like overly specific and a dickhead about it or something like that. So what he did was he did the job and he did like all the things, like all the lines down. But instead of actually doing lines, he just wrote, fuck you, real tiny, over and over and over and over and over and over and over again across the thing. So yeah. it looked like a pinstripe from afar, but when he got close, it was like, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. Who would have guessed? Sometimes it doesn't pay to annoy people. He probably, you know, he probably did for that. He probably made like a little tiny roller thing and just to go to the effort to do that, <laughs> to make the little thing to do it. Oh so my God. That's yeah. so, that is so petty and I love it. <laughs> but yeah, so impressionism versus surrealism. We were talking about <laughs> well, We kind of were going about it. Different. I feel like, I feel like impressionalism is a, a actually like taking a realism approach at surrealism, if that makes sense. I I would get. I mean, I, again, like it's it's kind of generalized as like broad strokes. You can see strokes, and you can like tell that. It's supposed to be in emotion, uh, in one particular moment, but also movements going on and things like this. Typically, like Starry Night, right? I feel like everybody knows that painting. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and I feel like that's probably like the my Batman Starry Night shirt. And I feel like that's probably like the quintessential impressionalism for most people that would know it. You know, and. Surrealism, I would say the most quintessential would be maybe the Scream Face or uh, the Melting Clocks. Do you know offhand? The Melting Clocks? I want to oh. say it's the guy who also did the stairs. Mm. Escher? I don't think it's that. doesn't matter. But I feel like it's kind of like this weird take on that, if that makes sense. Salvador Dali. That's who. Oh, right. Oh, he's a great one. Salvador Dali is fucking crazy. Yeah. He he went out way. He, went, he was one of those guys who went out of his way to be outrageous. I loved him. And it's too bad I didn't get any time to research Dali. He was on my list, too. I just, I didn't have enough time. That's all right. You over prepped for this <laughs> as it is. Yeah. By a lot. Well, in case you haven't noticed. <laughs> well. My my art my art preferences are elsewhere, from impressionalism and surrealism and stuff. I'm a f more of a fantasy and then. A, a medieval. I love realism just in general. Realism is good, but I like. Uh, if I had to narrow it down, I would say Frank Frazetta is my favorite artist of all time, with the high fantasy sci-fi realism. Just the portraits, oh my god, Frank Frazetta, look him up. Look up Frank Frazetta. Look up pretty much anyone that we've listed. Monet, Salvador Dali, Pollock. Well, my personal favorite, I guess, I'm going to just list is uh, Yoshitaka Amano. Gross. He does fantasy. Uh, if, you, if you've Gross. seen, like, any of the Final Fantasy covers, you've seen his work. Gross. He also did uh, Vampire Hunter D. Gross. Kiss my ass. Gross. <laughs> well, if you mentioned Salvador Dali. Another guy that was on my list was uh, Francis Bacon. Ah, yes. Francis yeah. is Bacon. Yeah, he was he was born in Ireland, but he wound up getting sold off by his father to, into England. And As you do. 
Yeah, and well, some crazy fucked up shit that he went through, and it's reflected in his work. It's just like a like portraits, but in an abstract way, and it's just a little bit on the dark side. I would I would uh, see it that way. Uh, he probably didn't have enough bacon. Oh. Bacon makes things better. Bacon always makes things better. Yeah, bacon and cheddar. Cheddar? Cheddar, cheddar cheese. Yeah. But yeah, cheddar make it better, too. <laughs> Come on, how do you not like that combo? <laughs> what are you looking for? Hmm? What are you looking for? Vincent van Gogh. Oh, that's right, his name is actually pronounced Gogh. Mm-hmm. It's like Jeff with a PH and a G. Or how you spell fish with a P, H, a G, a Y, and something else, or whatever it is? Yes. I've seen that one. It's like uh, based off how English works. Turns out English doesn't. English is a English is just a mashup of like six different languages. Fuck English. Fuck England. Fuck you, England. Fight me. <laughs> the British know what they did. I would say fight me, Queen, but rest in peace. So instead, fight me, King. He did get kingdom, right? Yeah, he's king now. Yeah. It's I don't know if he was, like, officially ordained. No, he, he was, he's yet. sworn in and everything, yeah. No, ordained. he's in and, Yeah, he, uh, he technically took the throne when she... Uh, no, Charles. King Charles. The third, I want to say, now. He's a... I, th- I think nobody likes him anyway. British royalty. Blech. Dude, they're a bunch of rich fucking inbred douche nozzles who gives a shit. I, I, the, the, what's his name? The one of them just put out the book. I don't give a flying. I don't, I've seen all the headlines from like, oh, royalty. He did this. He did. I'm like, I don't give a fuck. He's a rich. Wow, whatever. Anyway, Van Gogh. Back to Van Gogh. Van, Van Gogh. Gogh. Yeah. Dutch post impressionist painter. Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. He is. Yeah. Van Gogh is Dutch. That explains how you stay weird. Yeah. Did he cut off his own ear? Yeah, uh, yeah, he was the one who. Uh, yeah, he was put into a an insane asylum. asylum. Yeah, yeah. He allegedly did it to for a woman he loved or some nonsense. Yeah, I love you this much. Here's my ear. <laughs> oh, this would be a great story for our kids. Oh, you're you're like not gonna kids. like your next presence. <laughs> Family Guy reference counter. He actually <laughs> did not start off as an artist. He. Uh, not many artists start off as artists. They kind of come into it. True. Absolutely. It's something i kept that for quite a while it's um i you know other kids and there there were a few kids in my class growing up in elementary and you know they, they they were really good and one of them even took a he went to art and design in manhattan and i was like oh wow that'd be cool if i can go there but you know first uh you know, your school's got to pretty much give an okay to actually take the test to get in. And one of the most difficult things, you know, they, they want you to, to draw your hand. As it's known in the art community, the hand is one of the most difficult things to draw. And as Rob Blyfield can tell you, feet too. Well, Shots fired. Deadpool well, took a shot at him in his own movie. Probably the best joke of the two movies was when he took a shot at Rob Liefeld. Uh, after doing a few portraits myself, I'm finding um, ears are pretty difficult, too. Ears are weird. They're ears all... are just weird. That's why Van Gogh cut it off, so this way he didn't have to draw it. <laughs> <laughs> Rob Liefeld, do you know what you have to do? <laughs> cut off your feet. Give them to Tarantino. <laughs> Yo, Tarantino and his fucking foot fetish, man. Oh, my God. Oh, man, when I first showed my fiancé uh, from Dust Till Dawn, I was like, now, don't forget, but Tarantino has fetish. a fetish, fetish. It's going to come up later. And then What What do you mean? Oh. Yeah, there it is. Oh. But to be fair, if you had the chance fair. to do that, you would take the chance, too. I mean, it's Selma Hayek. Oh, <laughs> Oh, but she played Frida in that one movie, too, bringing it back around. Frida. Van Gogh. Van Gogh. Yeah, uh, I was just doing a quick skim of the the notes that I worked so hard for, and you tell me, hey, 
<laughs> Me too. Well, actually, it did come in handy. To be fair, I did try to tell you last week that this is a lot of entertaining and we just need to loosely cover things. Yeah, okay. Well, if I... I also thought that you would have seen at least one episode before coming on our episode. Oh, I had a joke. I had a joke question for this whole thing lined up, too, that I'm not going to use now. You know the bit I was uh, messaged you earlier is uh, a certain type of anime art. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do that for a different one. <laughs> yeah. We'll cover that on the generic anime episode. I would have thought that you would have done some research on the podcast we're coming on as well. Uh, yeah, if you'd seen the second Deluxe one before this, you might have just you might have just said, ah, maybe I don't want to come here now. You know what? I'm going to skip this. I'm going to make them set up and never show up. I'm going to take your mom out to a nice fancy fish dinner. And, I'll never, and never call her back. Oh. You take that back. <laughs> Which one is that one from? Anchorman? Yeah. Ah, yeah. A nice seafood dinner. Hmm. And then never call her back. So you were trying to say about Van Gogh. Van Gogh, yeah. It seems that um, he was the eldest son of a Reverend Theodorus Van Gogh. So they That's a name? Yeah, they, they, they were on the religious side, coming from basically like a preacher type. And he actually tried to go in that direction and things just didn't work out that way. Hmm. I did not know he tried to become a man of the cloth. Yeah. I mean, you know, being a ordained minister like I am, it's not for everybody. Tax write off. Actually, no, they discourage you from doing that in the uh, religion, believe it or not. They say, no, you know, it's a be a good citizen, pay your taxes. Gross. I mean, somebody's got to pay for the cops and military and roads being fixed. I'm a libertarian. Fuck the roads. <laughs> yeah, then it's going to fuck up your car. It's a libertarian, libertarian. As it turns out, fuck my car, too. <laughs> Dude, your car is the fucking... Oh, I love man. my car. I love my car. I really do. I've just had nothing but bad luck on Oh, my God. You've had such shit luck with that car. I just had the problem with the one tire, but... Van Gogh. Anyway, sorry. Yeah, Van Gogh. <laughs> he, uh, from what it's from what I got, he received a fragmented education one year at the village in Zundert. Zundert. Two years at a boarding school in Zebenberg, and eighteen months in high school, Tilburg. And at sixteen, he started working at a hog gallery. Of the, a hog gallery. Yeah, H A. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's Dutch. Yeah. Oh. It probably is, says like art or something in Dutch. I was gonna say it's like, to, is it like where they show off pigs before they eat them or something? A hog gallery. That would have been cool. I mean, well, we're like getting I said, back. I want get, the getting back to the culinary arts. You know, getting back to Francis Bacon. Uh, yeah, he did a. F- few paintings of uh, popes back then. It's very starts off with a dark background and he just like throws in stuff and then there's geometrical figures of you know sitting there and distorted faces and Oh, he did the real angels. Okay. Biblical angels, be not afraid. Van Gogh. Van Gogh. Bacon. How did he get into uh, art? Francis Francis Bacon? No, Van Gogh. Well, he... Uh, was it this gallery that we keep distracting yeah, yeah. ourselves from? Yeah, he start, started at... The pig gallery. Yeah, and then... Um, he actually got transferred to London for two years, and they moved him into Paris after a while. All time back to Paris. Yeah. So that's... More or less where people credit Impressionism actually starting. Yes. In Paris, which we mentioned earlier. I remember that. We were saying Uh, he goes to Paris. Yeah, clergyman. Yeah, he... So he tried to become a clergyman in Paris? 
No, no, no. Well, well, before we got into the art, so I got this. I was writing so much of this stuff, and it's just like now it's like all melting away. And <laughs> it's like taking a test. It's all right. We stumble here. See now, a lot oh, of people yeah. know him now from the uh, that what's it called? The TV show. Him, the guy. No, 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 no. Uh, the sci-fi one with the the British one. Doctor Who. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not a not a personal fan of that one, but a lot of them, a lot of people now know him from that one because he uh, they did the episode with him where they take where they take him to the gallery or some bullshit. Oh, huh. yeah. Although I don't know if it changes anything because I guess he still has to Van Gogh himself. That's I'm okay. so glad we went off on that little sidetrack in order to have no payoff. Well, yeah. I mean, cock. I mean, it's just because he's he's gotten mm. recent notoriety again because of the Doctor Who episode, but anything, which is weird because he takes him to a modern day art exhibit to try and like, I don't know, maybe cure his make him feel better, but, you know, at the same time, he can't fuck up the timeline. He van goffs himself. Yeah, he van so he has to <laughs> van goff himself. <laughs> Which, I don't, I don't know how the fuck you try and juxtapose that, because, you know, that's how he did die, unfortunately, but then, at the same time, they have this weird, like, episode where it's like, oh, look at how awesome and how well-remembered you are, so, you know. Yeah. Like, what? Like, that's, it's kind of weird. I, I just don't I, I get it, but I also don't get it. It's such a, it's a, almost a surreal thing, like surreal art. Surreal art, not real. I don't it's know. Maybe surreal. if I actually watched Doctor Who, I'd understand how it was supposed to work. But I, I don't give a fuck. As it turns out, it's not. It's Doctor Who. It, I get people like it, but I just that supernatural. I just couldn't get in. I just I don't know. Yeah, I hate to admit it. You're right. I came. <laughs> With way too much. Um, no, that's cool, dude. Try dude that's, you are the most informed guest that we have by just having this. Well, second, maybe to, uh, the guy on the phone. Yeah, the guy on the phone or uh, Ralph was also incredibly notable with rock and roll. But that was just us going off the cuff, very broad overview for rock and roll. Yeah, this we kind of li tried to limit ourselves to one style of art instead of just... I mean, it's hard to do the history of art. What do you start with? Ooga booga, caveman go, fe do 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 do, dying. Like, I come mean, on. That, yeah. I, um... And then we go from that to, ooh, now we put on paper. Paper come from. P.S. I invented paper, bitchin. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like we go from cave paintings to, <laughs> and, like paper, Dude. and then. Again, it, with like sculptures, like it's so hard to cover the history of art. It we kind of have to just be like, all right, well, let's focus on a style and be like, all right, here's some notable people. Here's when they started doing. Here's some notable paintings that you should check out. This is the time frame of when we expect it to have started mm, loosely, and we, you know, roundabouts in Pauli's fonts. It's where it's most known for. And Pally. where it's most known as being, you know, uh, from that era, from that time frame, from that area, that region, and just like, sure, it might have happened in other places. Like Mexico with Frida. Yeah, but it, like, got its rise. It's where it's got a notoriety. That's where it's got a claim to fame. I mean, there was a guy that I uh, heard did, re uh, the, while I was doing my own research, I found... He started in 1847, I think it was. That predates 1874, the whole little Paris art gallery nonsense, by a lot, turns out. I'm not going to do math. Fuck math. Well, there usually is somebody who's kind of always before their times in terms of art with that type of stuff. Yeah. Which is why it's hard to be like, all right, the history of art. It started with Bob. The caveman. He took dyes from berries and poop. That's probably how they got brown. I mean, cave art in itself is actually pretty interesting to oh, see. Oh, yeah. That. I, I'm not denying. Art as a whole is fantastic, and <laughs> it's so subjective. You can argue that anything is art. 
it all starts off with something, right? I mean, I view most weapons as art in its own form. Literature, too. sculpting, like anything can be art. It really all boils down to it. Programming, if you are into that type of shit, that's fucking art to some people. Writing the code, it can be considered artwork to some people. Art is so subjective. Well, one thought, one memory that came back to my mind is um, back in New York City under the Giuliani administration, there was a, some guy from Africa who made some artwork literally from elephant shit. Yeah, that's and, what I'm saying. And the, the uproar over that, it was like, be, be because I think he did what, of. Uh, did a painting with shit of uh, of Mary, you know, as a religious symbol, and you know, the that, Mary, what? Mary, Mary Magdalene, uh, Mother Mary, basically, uh, if I remember correctly, the Virgin Mary, and um, you know, naturally the the religious, you know, those who are religious, yeah, I they, can see drawing the Virgin Mary out of poop can be a little uh, argumentative. But, yeah, I mean that 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 was a huge insult, and Giuliani, you know, was speaking up for you know all the religious. You know how how could you do that? But uh, freedom of expression. Well, that that's part of it, but um, one one of the other reasons being is you know that this guy was from Africa. He's dirt poor, and you know he it's just, what he used. He it's what he had, and. You know, he made something of it. I mean, granted, it wasn't the type of... Me- I wouldn't want to use... Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't say that's anybody's preferred medium of choice. Speaking of, medium is... You t- it's an art term describing what type of shit you use. I use shit as a pun. Yeah, well, I'm not going to work with animal shit. You know, it's, <laughs> it stinks. Oh. <laughs> There's a famous artist I will not even attempt to try and look it up because I don't care enough. That got a lot of uproar within the last decade because they were using placenta blood. Like, feminist art is weird. Disgusting. But to them, it's art. You know? Yeah, that, that that's something I would never choose to use. I mean... I'm, I'm very content <laughs> using my oil paints. Yeah. Because... Yeah. Uh, Somehow, a lot more clean. Sanitary, and, too. And a, a little actually goes a very long way. I'm sure you could say the same thing about blood. Turns out all it takes is 300 uh, average-sized people to make one blade from all the iron extracted from the blood. Oh, wow. It wouldn't be a very good sword because the iron is not very consistent in your blood. On top of that, just getting the it, it wouldn't be worth it trying to smelt, like, Boil down and get the iron out of the blood. Yeah, how would you even refine that much iron? It, you'd have to first put the blood magnets. You'd probably first have to boil off the blood a bit, and then yeah, you'd have to like magnet it out, and then. But yeah, art is just so put it into a big. It's so subjective, and it's so transcendental. You know, like I said, art could be literature, it could be coding, it could be whatever the fuck you want it to be. It turns out art is art. There's no real way of describing it, which is why it's so hard to be like, all right, well, we're going to cover art. But, like, we can cover people from art. We can cover genres of art and, you know, generic time periods and regional uh, differences. I wouldn't bring up friggin' Amano in Impressionism. I wouldn't bring up the Japanese, like, landscape, uh, you know, fucking shit that they did back then. Like, I was only saying that because you brought Frisetta, so... You know, funny, know. funny that you mentioned um, working with blood. I remember actually watching on Netflix before going to sleep that there was some artist who actually gets blood delivered. Yeah. yeah and, yeah. you know, he keeps it in his refrigerator and he's he has a very short time span to work with it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I can't remember the name of the show and who the artist is. Dexter. But, uh, yeah, probably. I mean, <laughs> there's the one guy who uses his uh, chfats as a brush. 
Picasso. Picasso. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> he, uh, <laughs> he, yeah, he, uh, he uses his, uh, yeah, Picasso. I hate you. <laughs> you didn't know about Picasso? We didn't have to bring him up. <laughs> I mean, he does, he does, actually, I think, does impress Melissa's art. We didn't have to bring him up. I think that's all you can do with a brush like that. <laughs> <laughs> it takes a month to do it, though, because of, you know... Does he have a lot of stroking to do? Oh, Jesus Christ, well, not you too. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's because doing it against the canvas so much kind of gets it a little too... Uh, too raw. Yeah. It's fucking raw. <laughs> raw and sore. <laughs> Fuck both of you right now. What is wrong with you guys? Hey, I'm not the one using, you know... Ooh, I turned my shvinky into a key. <laughs> Fucking Austin Powers. Jesus Christ. Those movies actually still relatively hold up, too. Yeah, they're all right. The first one holds up. The second one's pretty all right. Uh, the third one, eh. Yeah, but... Art. Impressionalism. Check it out. We listed a couple notable people. Uh... Do you want to list off a couple more artists that they should check out? Just the names of them. You don't have to... Um, or any particular pieces that you enjoy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That I actually... He came prepared. Yeah, well, because I was writing... I, I The way I operate, I mean, in my room, I, I just, like, have papers. I just, like, write ideas down and then... Not so organized as I would like to be, but... Uh, Claude Monet, the Parliament Towers. It's, it's an architectural influence that I, I just like seeing. And the, the thing with um, Claude Monet is repetition of of the same scene, where if he, he just like paints it over, but like in a slightly different way. I, I kind of tried my luck with that. I I actually worked on two paintings at once. It was the same scene. One. One was at nighttime, and another was in the day, early sunrise. So it, it was kind of uh, my way of throwing some multitasking my way. Road to Giverny in winter, eighteen eighty-five. It's a cold daytime scene, and looking at this, I could just picture myself walking along that road, where you can actually just like. Every step you take on the snow, you can feel and hear the the that sound that it makes. But now, interesting piece of art you should see if you happen to be the Met Washington crossing the Delaware. It's massive. Yes, that is a big piece. It is a, extremely impressive too. Yeah, landscape at landscape around Arles. Have I said that right, Arles? Yeah. Okay. Another example of simplicity and bold colors bouncing out. And Van Gogh, Van Gogh's. Van Gogh. Gogh. Something I, I've seen it so many times is the, the irises. It's that shade of purple. I've actually tried to see if I could find it in the art store, and no luck yet. But I did buy a different type of, different shade of purple, but it, this is like extremely dark, so I'm gonna have to lighten it up a little bit. I I, I got to play around with that because some of the colors that I'm seeing between that seascape at near Les Saints, Maris de Mar. Yeah. Well, anyway, with the with the irises, it, the, again, the, there's like a simplicity, but yet it's bold, complex. I mean, it just, you know, forever leaves me wondering, how did he manage to pull that off? And um, one of the ways to work these colors is I spend a lot of time just mixing colors on the palette till I finally come up with something that's actually going to work for me. Let's plug you one more time. Instagram. 
Oh, uh, Raging Cajun. It is on Instagram, right? That's where we find you? Yeah. Raging Cajun? R A Y J U N space C A J U N, right? That's what it was? There you go. Yeah. I said it right. R A Y J U N underscore K A J U N. That's what it is. Underscore. We'll yeah. have to make sure that that's there. But yeah, yeah, he's got all sorts of awesome fucking pieces yeah. on here. He's got over 200 <laughs> things. Yeah, I got a lot of uh, drawings that I actually did when I was in high school because, again, you know, the curriculum, for lack of a better term, a lot of it was bullshit. <laughs> And um, I think that's a good point to end. School is bullshit, kids. Find something you like and yeah, do it. Yeah, because uh, <laughs> you know, it just for me it destroyed some self esteem because I'm like so frustrated because the lessons that are being taught I'm not getting. And what did I wind up? Do? I wound up doing a lot of a lot of drawings. I mean, that this goes back. So, to be fair, school is not bullshit for some people. Well. For Dep- some, it is. Well, it depends. Depends what you. I mean, certain basic things you should be taught. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But uh, it's not all bullshit. But there is a lot of it. Join us next week. <laughs>